What's up everybody? Welcome back or welcome to my channel. I am Michaela. for those of you who don't know me. I'm an adventure, outdoor, and lifestyle creator here on YouTube. This video is going to be a little bit different than some of my other videos. This video is specifically going to be regarding ADHD. I was diagnosed with ADHD almost two years ago now and it has entirely changed my life. I really feel like my diagnosis helped me to understand myself better and give me some insights into how I can form better habits that make me more productive and generally happier. I am a person who has chosen not to take medication for my ADHD and I have found that living in the present makes a huge difference in my symptoms and the way that I approach life. So here are 15 tips for how to live in the present moment as a person with ADHD. The first tip is to understand ADHD and not just ADHD in general, but understand how it affects you. Every person's ADHD is is different based on age, habits, perceptions, and the unique inner workings of your brain. Understanding your ADHD and how to mitigate it can help you form practices and habits in your daily life that will make you more successful, more productive, and more optimized for healthy living. <laughs> Number two, understand the concept of mindfulness and how it can help your ADHD to calm the F down. So many of us with ADHD have trouble living in the present simply because our brains are always on the go. It was so weird to me when I discovered that neurotypical people don't have a constant inner monologue. They don't have multiple thoughts occurring at once just swimming around in their brains. And I did try ADHD medication at a certain point. I was on stimulants and due to me not being diagnosed until well into my adult life, I had found that I had created a lot of habits that just accommodate that constant inner dialogue and inner noise. And when I was on medication, everything was just way too quiet. I was constantly unnerved by the lack of thought process happening. A part of mindfulness is just understanding the inner workings of your brain, of being mindful and aware of what's going on in there. So now we're going to get into kind of the more specific tips of how you can be more present, starting with number three, breathing exercises. I know that this sounds so stupid, but breathing can actually help you to become more present. Breathing exercises are a facet of meditation and a facet of ancient yogic philosophy, commonly referred to as pranayama, where prana, meaning life force, directly refers to the breath. When you practice pranayama, you essentially inhale for a certain number of seconds, hold the breath for a certain number of seconds, and exhale for a certain number of seconds, allowing you to become fully aware of the breath in your body, and the counting of the breath can help you to calm down the background noise that's occurring while you're practicing. I have found that pranayama is actually extremely effective for me as a form of meditation. However, I do not practice it when I am anxious because I find that when I have anxiety, focusing on my breath just makes me feel like I can't breathe. So be careful with that if anxiety is a symptom of your ADHD. Number four, physical activity. Developing a mind-body connection is also a form of mindfulness and staying present. Anything that helps you to connect what you're thinking up here with a physical sensation. I personally find that running and lifting weights are a really great way to practice this. Number five, nature therapy. If you just go out into nature and you sit completely quiet, and you start to notice all of the sensations around you, like the wind on your skin, what it might feel like if you're sitting on a log or a rock, 
and you start to notice all of the sounds of the rustling of the leaves and the trees and the birds, that is a very effective form of mindfulness that can really help you to feel like you are in a state of presence. Number seven, healthy eating. This is not necessarily a facet of mindfulness, but it does relate to a certain state of presence. I find that eating healthy foods can actually help to make my brain work better, my body feel better, so that I don't feel as uncomfortable in my body. Number eight, this one is a very simple ADHD trick, but break down your tasks. When we have ADHD, one single task, like doing the dishes, can feel like 20 tasks. You have to get up, you have to walk over to the sink, you have to turn on the water, you have to put on your dishwashing gloves if you use them, you have to scrub. Every single scrub of a plate can feel like a separate task. I personally like to make a list of tasks and then make a list of subtasks that correspond to each task. Yes, this can look very overwhelming on paper, but making lists like this can actually help your brain to understand exactly what it needs to do and make the process of organizing all 20 tasks much easier. I feel like part of the overwhelm of having so many tasks is not knowing which order to do them in and not understanding that all of the tasks are actually separate, very accomplishable tasks. Number nine, use timers. I work as an entrepreneur and part of what I do is freelance design. So I have clients that have these huge projects that I have to work on and sometimes it can be extremely overwhelming just because of that task prioritization. So I will set timers for myself throughout my day to practice a technique called time blocking. Essentially what this means is that you set a timer for an hour and in that hour you are only allowed to work on one specific task. And then for the next timer you do a different task. Some people like to work on tasks for 15 minutes at a time. It really depends on what works for you. For me, one hour seems like the sweet spot. Number 10, practice mindful listening. This is a really big deal because if you have ADHD, sometimes your social interactions can be very difficult. You've got all those thoughts spinning around in your head. So when you're having a conversation with someone, it can be really easy to wanna blurt stuff out Partially because you feel like if you don't say what you're thinking in your head right away, the thought is going to pass by and so is the conversation and you're never going to get to engage with that person ever again because they're not going to find you interesting and you're just going to blow it. That is definitely very real. It's a real part of ADHD. But if you are a person who loves having friends and social interactions like me, you kind of want to make sure that you're masking a little bit of that in a healthy way to ensure that the other person feels heard and understood. A big thing for me when doing this is I like to just listen to the person and wait for them to stop talking before I interject and to accommodate all of those thoughts running around in my brain while that person is talking, I like to take those thoughts and directly relate them to that person so that in my head I can form a catalog of who that person is, what they like to talk about, their mannerisms, how they engage with their surroundings, and cataloging all of that information while they're speaking helps me to not blurt out everything that I'm thinking because it's all going in the little slots, if that makes sense. Number 11, mindfulness meditation. This kind of ties back into what I was talking about earlier about the breathing practices. Breathing practices can be a very good way to meditate, but there are so many other ways to meditate as well. One thing that I really like to do is guided meditations. There's a ton on YouTube. There's a bunch of people who create them. They're even on Spotify. And I like to do a mindfulness meditation when I wake up in the morning and then when I go to bed again. The one in the morning is to help wake me up, energize me, and get me in a state of focus and calm. The one at night is to make sure that I don't stay up until 5 a.m. surfing through pictures of cute pandas on Pinterest. 
Number 12, try gratitude journaling. This might seem so silly, but I do like to journal at the end of every day because for me, journaling is kind of like a brain dump. If I do it at the end of the day before my nightly mindfulness meditation, it can help me to get everything that I was thinking about onto paper so that it's, it's not running through my brain while I'm trying to go to sleep. The gratitude part comes in when you wake up every morning and you want to think about all the things that are in your present life, the things that exist in your present, tangible things that you can understand and see that you are grateful for. That helps you to be present when starting your day. Number 13, visual cues. And this just means sticky notes or things in plain sight so that you can remember things easier. For example, I guess this is the best way to explain this. I like to buy a lot of produce and I have decided that I am not going to use the produce drawers in my refrigerator because a common part of ADHD is that if something is not where you can see it, it simply does not exist. So I have spent regrettably probably hundreds of dollars on produce that has simply been wasted because if I can't see it, that it's there, it doesn't exist and it just rots away in what I perceive as the void of the refrigerator drawers. So keeping those things in plain sight when I open the refrigerator, it's like a cue to my brain that says, hey, this exists, do you want a cucumber? <laughs> And you can do the same thing with sticky notes too. Just put them in a place so that you can see them and it'll remind you of what you got to do. Number 14, seek support. This is very important because oftentimes with ADHD, we tend to feel very isolated from everyone else. We feel like people don't understand us, especially when it comes to our executive dysfunction and our inability to be productive in other people's eyes you should do your best to explain to the people that are in your life how ADHD affects you. I know this is a tough conversation and some people just might not understand, but I think you'll realize that a lot more of your friends can relate to your ADHD experience in one way or another. Seeking support also has to deal with therapy if it works for you or a psychiatrist to help you manage and monitor your medication. However, I do know how difficult it is to find people to talk to who actually understand. Even some therapists seem absolutely unqualified to recognize the feelings that you experience as a resort, as a result, resort, as a result, of your ADHD. Just find someone to talk to. And you know what, on some days that might be yourself or it could just be your dog. And last, number 15, have self-compassion. Recognize that you are doing just fine right where you are. Comparison is our enemy. Comparing our levels of pro product productivity and our ways of living our lives to that of tragically neurotypical people, that is not going to help you at all. Recognize that there are going to be habits that you have to form that are different. Recognize that ADHD is a journey, not the destination. You can live a happy, successful, productive life, but it just might take some time to form the practices that are really going to help you. Don't give up and be gentle with yourself. Give yourself those days that one of my favorite creators on YouTube famously likes to call potato days. Give yourself potato days. Organize potato days into your week where you just do nothing. You recharge, you self-soothe and don't let your thoughts about other people's perceptions of you interfere with what works for you when it comes to your potato days. Some people will probably say that watching TV for six hours is a really unhealthy way to spend your time. But you know what? For a lot of us, it's actually the healthiest way that we can spend our time so that we can prepare 
for all of the other things that we have to do coming up in the rest of the week. So those were my tips for living in the present moment with ADHD. If you also have ADHD, leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what your best tips for managing your ADHD have been. I would love to hear from you and I would love to make more videos on this. So if you liked it, leave a thumbs up. I hope you'll stick around, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.